from BBC News. And losing a child is perhaps the most painful experience that a parent can go through. Now, one MP is calling for more to be done to help cover the costs for those who go through such a devastating loss. Uh, Carolyn Harris uh, broke down in Parliament as she described the death of her eight-year-old son, Martin. She's calling for the government to provide £10 million to cover fees for children's funerals. Carolyn is with us now. Um, Carolyn, thank you very much for coming with us, uh, for being with us this morning. Let's first, before we speak to you, um, let's see a little bit of you speaking in Parliament. Here we go. I couldn't function, as I've said. I couldn't do simple chores like washing my hair or cooking a meal. When the undertaker was explaining to me what the plans for my little boy's funeral were, I just wanted to hold my little boy, not bury him. But I remember the day the bill arrived and that fear in my stomach as to how I would pay for it. I know you didn't want to watch that. No. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming to talk to us uh, I'm about it. And I don't want to in any way no. upset you. But oh, I'm fine. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the position that you found yourself yeah. in. It was many years ago now. Of course. But but your eight-year-old son was killed, wasn't yeah. he? What happened? Well, I mean, it, it was just one of those things. It was a quiet Sunday afternoon, mm. and he stepped out onto the road, running over to see his friend, and he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And within 24 hours, he turned the machine off. And he'd, he'd been hit by a car? He'd been hit by a car. Um, a devastating thing to happen, mm. and when you... when In the aftermath of that, you obviously have a lot of things to organise. Mm. What was that like for it you? It was horrendous because you, you, you don't function, like I, I said in my speech, you don't, nothing resonates, nothing registers. People tell you things and you just don't comprehend what they're saying. Mm. You probably say yes to everything. And I'm, I don't regret any of the decisions that I made on mm. Martin's funeral because it was what I wanted for him to have. But what I'm saying is, I didn't make my choices based on cost, I made my choices based on the fact. As a mother, mm. I wanted to give the only thing I could give my son. There was nothing else I could ever give him, ever. I wanted to give him a funeral, mm. and I had to bury him with my grandparents. Now, looking back, if I'd gone for cremation, it would have been cheaper. Mm. If, you know, interestingly enough, if I'd buried Martin on his own, it would have been cheaper. So you're well, just saying it was, it was an incredibly difficult decision, and you didn't feel prepared or you didn't feel no, able to make the, the right choice at that time? Well, no, I, it, it's, not, it's not even the right choice, is it? It's the only choice I mm. had was to do what, what I've done. And I don't think any parent should ever be in a position where they have to make the choices on their children's funeral based on cost. Right, so what would you like to be done? Because presumably there are costs involved. There are. And somebody's got to pick them up, yeah. haven't they? So well, what you'll find, Louise, is that most undertakers will be very, very compassionate with their discounts. The ministry will rarely charge. So the real costs are the burial or the cremation costs. Now, I'm not asking any local authority to waiver those costs. I'm saying to the government, for £10 million, you can set up a pot of money which local authorities can tap into whenever there's a child's funeral. So nobody has to worry about who's going to cover the cost. The money is there. It never appears on a bill. It never gets related to a parent as how much mm. it costs for these things. The money is there. There is no reason to put anybody through the distress of receiving a bill for something they can't afford. And I, I totally understand this is a you know, really emotional subject for you and for many others watching as well. But as, as Louise was saying, there are costs. And is it about priorities and, and how, where that money needs to be spent? And like, there will be bills about um, registrars, uh, about funerals, mm. and, and all those things that need to be considered. And mm. somebody has to pay for those. And that's why I'm asking the government for £10 million. It's a, such a small ask. You know, we waste far more money than that on, on other things. If for £10 million you could alleviate so much hurt mm. from parents who just cannot cope with the situation they're in. Mm. Um, obviously, you've been through it personally, so how much difference would it have made to you? And you talked, didn't you, about that devastating mm. moment when... Just... The bill arrived. Bill. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, I think I, that was the first time I actually realised how much the funeral had cost. And a lot of the costs for me were wavered, but the local authority... Because uh, psychologically, I needed to bury Martin with my grandparents. Mm. It cost more money to open a grave. And what sort of response have you had from oh, other people in, in bringing it, this it, up? In Westminster, the support has been phenomenal in terms of people caring and you know, are keen to see something happen. The people who've contacted me from outside in that big, wide world who tell me their stories mm. are absolutely heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Mm. So I can't give it up. No. I can't. I've got to no, keep I totally going for them. I totally understand that. And we really appreciate you coming My on this pleasure. morning. I know it's you know, a difficult story for thank you to talk you. about. But thank you very much, Karen. Thank you. Thank you.